be here and we are doing the blogger workshop. This is an idea I came up with because I get a lot of questions from people and I get a lot of people wanting to know information and so I thought I would just, you know, share it here in this format because it's easier for me to share with a lot of people than to give the same answer over and over like in an email or something. So I thought it would be really fun for us to come together on a Monday morning to get the week started off in a good way and to start moving our blogs forward. Now, I want to get some things out right up front. Um, the things I'm going to talk about will work about on any blog platform that you're using. Um, I do personally use the Empower Network platform. And if you want to take a look at it or learn more about it, there's uh, two buttons below that you can learn more about it. Um, it is by far the best platform I've ever used, and I have used every platform that there is at some point in the last seven years. So um, it's down there if you want it, but today I thought we would talk about <clears throat> content creation because that can be a problem. Oh, one other thing right up front. Um, I do a lot of webinars, go for an hour. I'm going to try and keep this to 30 minutes because that's about as long as my kiddo will give me silence for. So we're going to try and squeeze a bunch of information in in a smaller period of time, but I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes so that we can uh, just learn and then go out and implement because that's what it's all about. Okay, so let's talk about content creation. People have issues. They like especially even before if they're thinking about or contemplating blogging. Well, my God, what am I going to blog about? I don't have that much to talk about, and I don't think what I have to say is what people are going to hear. Why would anyone listen to me? Well, yeah, I can understand that, but if you, and this is what the important part is, is if you get really clear about who you're talking to and what they need, you will never be at a loss <clears throat> for content, ever. Okay, and I'm going to give you a little um, a little exercise that you can run through today um, to get content creation ideas so that you never run out. But before that, I want to talk about getting clear because it is probably the most important thing that you can do for your blogging business. Um, here's an example. Let's just say, okay, you know, when you're blogging, you want to talk to someone, so, and you want to talk to them in a way that they know you're speaking to them. Here's an example, okay? Let's say you go and you do a little keyword research and you find that uh, how to start a blog gets a lot of searches. And you're like, okay, well, that's right up my alley. That's what I'm talking to people about is how to start a blog and how to blog successfully. So you write this blog post, how to start a blog. But it doesn't get any clicks. It doesn't get any traction. And it's because it's not speaking to anyone directly. Now, let's say you um, have gotten really clear and you've decided that you're going to talk to people who are still working a full-time job but really want to leave that job and be bloggers full-time and make a full-time income blogging. Okay? That is super clear. Okay? So now, when you decide to write a post about how to start a blog, your title becomes how to start a blog when you're working 40 hours a week and have a two-hour commute. Now. When somebody sees that, say on Facebook or something, do you think if that person is working 40 hours and is commuting a long time, they're going to be like, oh my God, that's me. Click, click, click. Yeah, they are. So then you need to make sure that when they click over, they continue to get content that is exactly directed toward them. So you don't want to just start giving general information about how to start a blog. You want to really make it specific to them. So let's say one of the things that you want to do to start a blog is you know, to get your head right, which you should, if that's the huge piece. So talk to them about how they can use that two-hour commute to listen to mindset audios and to do their, their thinking and their brainstorming and maybe use the voice memo to do some brainstorming for content ideas. You know, give them ways that they can make it work where they're at so they can move to where they want to go. Okay, another example, same example, but different group of people. What if you've decided to target women who are home with kids, young kids. So then maybe your title becomes how to start a blog when you've got four kids climbing over you and you can't even pee by yourself. You know, that speaks to people. The woman who's on her phone or has her laptop in the bathroom while she's trying to potty train her toddler is going to be like, holy heaven, that is me. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. 
So you've gone from how to start a blog with no clicks to speaking to someone specifically. So they know. It's like a red light beacon shining at them. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. And they're going to click. So then, you know, then in that second example, you're going to give information about how you start a blog. And if these women have small chunks of time, like me, this is why this is only 30 minutes long, right? Talk to them about how they can succeed in small chunks of time. Give them examples of ways they can blog quickly. Speed blogging, you know, just different things that they can do to succeed and start a blog in small chunks of time because that's what moms with lots of kids at home generally have is small chunks of time where they can be super effective but they don't have a lot of it. So you've got to fit it in around the cracks of everything else. So that's the kind of content you're going to go there. Okay, so you see how being really clear and being really specific about who you're talking to makes a huge difference, not only in your titles, but in the content that you're going to write and the way you're going to write it. It's all the same stuff, but you're making it specific to certain people. Okay, so let's talk about the example and how, or the, uh, the exercise we're going to work on today. This is like my favorite thing to do in a couple instances. One, when I start a new blog. I love to do this. It's like my very favorite thing, but I'm kind of crazy that way. But when I get stuck, this is my favorite thing to do when I get stuck. When I get stuck and I'm just staring at a white page and I can't make my fingers go, this is a great exercise when you are feeling content stuck or when you're starting a new blog or when like you want to start a new series or if you want to start, you want to get going on like an email responder series. These, this is a great, great exercise for any of those things. Okay. I don't know if your house is like mine, but we have buckets of markers and bags of markers laying everywhere. Like right here on my desk, a bag of markers. Okay. And we also have like rolls of big paper or big uh, pads of paper. And if you've got that, you know, this that's the way I like to do it. I'm like old school. I like to get down on the floor. And if you have small kids at home, this is a great way to get them connected with you and try kind of out of your hair for a little bit. Give them their own piece of paper. Give them their own markers. Set them up side by side or face to face like so that you're working together like a team. That's like one of the easiest ways I managed to get this planning done when Hannah was littler was because I'd be like, okay, we're going to work like a team. Here's your paper. Here's mine. And we're going to do it at the same time. Okay, so get a piece of paper and some markers. I like colored markers so I can you know, do different things in different colors, but that's my kind of crazy, so if it's not yours, that's cool. You could also use an online um, mind mapping software. There's lots of free ones out there. I've done that as well, but I do really like to see things on paper. Um, okay, so then what you're going to do is I hope that you've gotten clear about who you're talking to already. So I want you to write that across the top of the paper. Who exactly are you talking to in your blog? Who are you trying to connect with? Who are you trying to speak with? Okay. Some people call this a target market, and it doesn't have to be for your entire blog. It might be like for a section of your blog that you want to direct toward this group of people. Or you might be like this marketing funnel that's going to be mar targeted to a certain group of people. But for this exercise, we want to be really clear about exactly who we're talking about. Okay, so if we're talking about, let's go with the example of a mom at home who wants to, you know, <clears throat> create a successful blog because that's one of the people I talk to. Okay, let's, let's go with that. So we write across the, the top of the page, um, mom with multiple kids who wants to succeed at blogging. Okay, now next thing you do is under that we're going to write some headings. Okay, think of four or five things that might be stumbling blocks for this mom to succeed in blogging. Okay, it might be um, time management. She just might not know how to use her time effectively. So you write time and management across, you know, in one section. I would do it in one color. And then maybe another one is, um, you know, meals. Having, you know, getting good meals on the table so that she has time, you know, to work and her kids are getting fed. You know, entertaining her kids while she's trying to work. Maybe that's another topic. I would do them in three separate colors, but, you know, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you know, maybe it's content. You know, maybe coming up with content and figuring out what to write about is another thing that she might have concerns about. So now we've got some major, these are big topics, like big overall kind of encompassing topics. 
So you write those across the top of your page. Now we're going to go to each one and we're going to break it down. Okay, let's go to like meals. So how could she do meals quickly and in nutritiously? Uh, she might, you, you can do this in a number of ways. You might go by protein. You might say chicken, pork, uh, beef, vegetarian, you know, and then, and then line out that section in those ways. Or you might do uh, skillet meals or crock pot meals or, you know, one pot meals or however you and your brain works, you know, you, however you want to delineate that bigger topic and break it down. See if you can't break it down into like four or five different things. And then do that for each one. Okay, so let's stick with the one we've already lined out. So now we've got um, skillet meals. Now go out and find or create or learn about five or six skillet meals, really recipes. Okay, and then you can do five or six uh, crock pot recipes. Okay, now if you've got five of these big topics across the top and you break them into four smaller categories, and then, so that's 20, and then you get five, five small specific topics within each of those four areas, that's a hundred blog posts right there. hundred blog posts. That will take you for more than three months. So maybe this becomes a quarterly exercise. Maybe you come back, re, you know, regroup, and look again at your topics and who you're talking to and what they're doing, and you do it every three months so that you have content forever. I'm just letting it soak in for a second. This is a really, really simple way to never, ever run out of content. The other thing that you might want to do is keep a notebook with you wherever you go. Because there is always, when you have start thinking like a marketer and like a blogger, you're going to start seeing things in a different way. You're going to notice things in a different way. And you're going to start to see how everything that you see in the world become something to blog about. It's funny because now, you know, I make dinner or mix, like yesterday we, uh, we spent the day cooking so that we could freeze meals for lunches throughout the school year. And uh, so I line everything up on the counter and Hannah's like, are you going to take a picture so you can blog about this? Like, yes I am. <laughs> you know, but that's the whole thing. It's like, remember that it's depending on like who you're talking to and what the topic of your blog is, of course. Um, mine is about Wham Life. So pretty much everything about my life is part of you know what I blog about. So you can really look around your world and the things that you see, bring them into your to your blog. So take a notebook with you, or you know, if you have the voice memo thing on your phone, voice memo it because you will forget. Life is crazy and you will forget things. So write them down or in some way put them in a format that you can find them later so that you can blog about them later. Okay, so one other thing that I would like to do with this time um, is to answer a question. I get lots and lots of questions and so I thought that at the end of um, our workshop here I would take some questions. Um, not take some questions, I would answer some questions. But if you have questions for me that you'd like me to answer during one of our workshops, please feel free to connect with me on Facebook and you can shoot me a question and maybe I'll pick your question to answer on the next workshop. Um, the, the question that I, I picked for today, um, actually a team member of mine asked this because someone had asked her, and it's a question that I get asked a lot as well. She said, why, um, why would people pick Empower or like a WordPress blog over Blogger? You know, why, why can't you just go the free route and just grab a Blogger blog? So here's my answer. Well, there's a few pieces to my answer. One, if you really want to be successful and you want to make money with your blog, Blogger is a bad idea. And here's why. Because one, it's not yours. You don't own it. They can delete your blog anytime they want. You do not have control over your content, your ideas, your stuff. Believe me, it happens. I have had more than one blogger blog just disappeared out of nowhere. And it wasn't because I was doing things wrong. It wasn't because I was using it as a link farm or anything. It was be I don't know why it was. In fact, one of them was one of the first blogs I ever put on the internet. It was about me and being a new mom and my kid that wouldn't stop screaming all day and all night. 
So now all of those things, those memories, my first few days as a mom, they're gone because I made the decision to put them on a blogger blog. That, that's a big one. I mean, you do not want to have all of your hard work, all of your memories in a place where it can just be deleted. You don't want that. Um, now, as far as a WordPress blog, I mean, that's a better solution because you do own it. And you, own, you have to buy hosting, you have to install WordPress, you have to do a lot of tech stuff. A lot of tech stuff to get it to work and to get it to look right. And the learning curve is big. It really is. It's a big learning curve to do WordPress. I mean, once you figure it out, if you get there, it's a good thing. I mean, I really liked my WordPress blogs, but it took me a long time. It took me a long time to figure out how to get them to do what I wanted them to do. Um, and then the second problem with the WordPress blog is that if you are trying to make money, you're just one little blog out there. You have no authority in the eyes of Google. And if you have no authority within the eyes of Google, then they're not going to rank you in the top of their searches for whatever keywords or you know phrases people might be looking for that you might be answering the question you might be giving that person exactly what they're looking for but they're not going to be able to find it because you're just one little blog out there in a sea of gajillion blogs that's a big problem because it takes a lot of work to get one WordPress blog to rank in the search engines and it's like mind-numbing work mind-numbing linking work and I, that's not why I decided to start a blog. I didn't start a blog so that I could write and rewrite and write and rewrite articles and post them places and get links back to my blog so I could actually get people to look at it. That's not why I did it. I did it to express myself and to write and to share what I know and my experiences with other people and to help them succeed and help them live the life they want to live right now. Not three years from now when my blog finally ranks. So those are the problems with WordPress and Blogger, which is brings me to why like I decided to join Empower because Empower solves all those problems. You own it. It's just like having a WordPress blog. You own your content. They can't take it away from you, but you are on a shared domain, which gives you tons and tons of power. In fact, just last week, we were number one on the hot topics of Alexa from Power Network. We are quickly becoming a very, very high Alexa ranking site. So you get traffic quickly, and it's easier to rank without doing hardly anything. So that is why I highly, highly recommend using an Empower Network blog. And with, there's new things coming, new things coming next month, and it's going to get very exciting, and it's going to be very, very easy. There will be no tech block. You know, there is going to be, Easy enough that you can do everything for your blog from your phone. That's simple. I'm not kidding. It's going to be awesome. But So, yes, there. you know, you can start a blogger blog, but you're not going to look professional. You have run the risk of getting things deleted, and you're not going to, it's just, it's not the way to go if you really want to do a business. If you just want to have an online journal where you share pictures of your kids and you, you, you know, you email the post to your friends and your family, then go ahead. That's totally fine. This is about business, though. And if you're going to do business, you need to do it in the safest way possible. And the best way, the fastest, the easiest, the shortest learning curve you have is Empower Network. So I hope that answers the blogger versus WordPress versus Empower question. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about Empower Network, there's buttons below. You're welcome to click them and look around. You can. Uh, all my contact info is down there. You're welcome to hit me up on Facebook. Send me a friend request. I accept friend requests. I love meeting new people. And if you have questions, shoot them over me, and I will do my very best to answer them. Okay. We have not quite hit a half an hour, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it short today because it's our last week of summer vacation, and I really want to go hang out with my kiddo and get the rest of my work done. So you guys have an amazing day. Please, this is a workshop. It's not a watch shop. Take the exercise I've given you today and do it. Implement. Speed of action is huge in success. You can't contemplate your way to success. You have to act your way to success. So take the exercise that I've given you and do it. Do it. 
and then send me a Facebook message and tell me how it went, okay? All right, guys, we're going to do this every Monday. I um, had a lot of tech stuff I had to do in the background to set up today. So I'm hoping to start doing this at 10 once Hannah goes to school, but we might stick with 1030. If you have thoughts on that, you know, feel free to share them with me as well. All right, so I'm going to let you go. This is Jackie Lee, and uh, I will see you next week for the Bloggers Workshop. Have an awesome week, guys.